New York. Apple. Hot dogs. Dollar. Hollywood. Democracy. Freedom. Hmm. Rock and roll. Wall Street. Statue of Liberty. Los Angeles, California. McDonald's. Jeans. Bubble gum. Video games. Nintendo. Last time I went to Costco. What's so great about America? Every Saturday night, 7 to 9 p.m., explore American culture and language. With Master Steve, Ina MK, and Hasba Cutie. Cutie, 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 cutie. Tune in to find out about what makes America so great. The Great, great American, American Weekend. Weekend. Listen exclusively on Radio Vaughn 103.1. Also watch us on the Radio Vaughn Facebook page, website, and mobile app. Aloha, hola, and hello, <laughs> listeners. This is the Great American Weekend. I've got, we've got, main, our, our main man, Master Steve, over here on my left. And we've got our finest host, Ina MK, uh, to my hello, right. Hello, and we've got Hasva QT. Sitting right here in QT, the middle QT, of the hall. QT, uh, This is the Great American Weekend. You can listen to us live on Facebook. You can hear us on uh, the YouTube links, and you can hear us on 103.1 live on the FM radio dial, as well as the Radio Von app that is available on our webs- website. So, Thank let's... Thank you. Don't forget I, the app. Yeah. Don't 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 forget. You know, there's an app for that. And tonight we're having a safest episode of all. <laughs> it's so safe. It's so safe, except for I some of my don't curse words. No, I I'm considering maybe just doing a bunch of what not to do's tonight. Oh, cool! I like that <laughs> idea. You know, th- this can, can this we month sm- sm- June smoke, drink is and just. <laughs> In not, the studio. <laughs> ask not I was what thinking your country about, you know, like for you. Standing on a chair with rolly wheels in order to change the light bulbs and um, we'll stuff be like in that. Trouble. <laughs> June in America is National Safety, Safety Awareness Month. Month. Which everyone celebrates. <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> the singing Christmas carols. Um, you know, it, Every, it's, everyone celebrates. <laughs> <laughs> It's usually. I, I would love to see all these Americans walking down the street and just being like, Happy "Hey, by the way, your day. shoes are untied, buddy. Uh, it's National Safety Month. Just had to let you know." Because <laughs> if it wasn't National Safety Month, I wouldn't tell you that your shoes were untied. Yeah, I'd just let you just... trip and fall down flat <laughs> yeah, on your exactly. face. It's, if you're in New York, that would make you know. sense. <laughs> It'd just be like, yeah, "I don't care about you." <laughs> Which is the the no, usual I mean, demeanor of it's, New Yorkers? It's it's something that they've done. The National Safety Council in the U.S. It's something that they've put together to try to set aside a month to promote uh, safety, both at work and at home, and to call people's attention to some of the most common causes or situations that lead to uh, unintentional injury and or death. You know, I, I asked someone recently who is a specialist in environmental causes in Armenia, and I I asked him what he thinks are the top three main uh, uh, dangerous factors for environmental or health concerns in Armenia. Don't and get cold. No, you know what he told me? <laughs> yeah, close I, the window, no drafts. That's Kwasniak, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be... Oh. But, Grandma's advice. Drafts. But my first, my first assumption was that he was going to say something about like the environment, like you know, mining or something about to do with deforestation, but he said, actually, and this go, ties back into the health concerns, that asbestos that was used in uh, preser- uh, fireproofing homes in Armenia and apartment buildings is probably the number one health factor and health concern for Armenians. So it's interesting to, oh, really? yeah, because I know for in America, asbestos was a huge thing in the 80s and 90s because after they realized that asbestos was totally poisonous and that many people were using it on their walls, it was it was a campaign that was done to make people aware so that, that you know you would properly treat your walls before you would uh, remodel or you would get it removed professionally so that's something we're experiencing now in armenia which is i yeah, think if I it's remember interesting right, I, I, when i was a kid in minneapolis there was a building that was built um just like a decade earlier and they found out that it was just filled with 
uh, asbestos, which was used as as a, a as an insulation. Yeah, fire you know, apparently. And, and well, it was, it was a it, well. I think it was used because as an insu- as insulation because it was fire retardant and mm-hmm. it wouldn't burn, unlike some things that just kind of go up in flames. And yeah. if I remember right, they ended up having to basically tear the building down, down. and rebuild it because it was going to cost less to do that than to uh, gut it and get all the asbestos out. I wonder what they'll do here because that's, I mean, that's a, I mean, if that's one of the major health concerns and safety concerns for people's uh, quality of living in Armenia, I wonder... Why do what, we have those... Well, things. not not what <laughs> not why, uh, uh, like uh, Steve just said, why uh, the because the asbestos. I mean, yeah. it's practical, it's fireproof, but um, I mean, fire retardant, but um, it's really dangerous for your health. So, uh, as a matter of safety, I think that that's something that the the new government in Armenia would have to address. Um, yeah. I mean, not, not to get so serious all of a sudden. <laughs> well, safety, safety is serious. I mean, we were just going to joke around all all night if if you didn't get all serious. We'll, there, we'll right? get there. We'll, we'll, we'll get, get there. there. <laughs> um, so yeah, June is National Safety Month in the U.S. and the last week of June. So next week is traditionally National Lightning Safety Week. Oh so wow! We're going to talk a little bit about being uh, safe in a lightning storm. You know, don't go out there. Get all wet in the rain and grab onto the nearest flagpole. <laughs> no, a light, a Zeus. Yo, Zeus. It's raining out. I hear thunder and I see lightning. Let's go hide under a tree. No, 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 no. No way. <laughs> Let's Not hide under idea. the tallest pole that is directly leading to the sky down to ourselves. Not the smartest idea. <laughs> That's a bad idea. Yeah, bad idea. Bad Good idea. idea? Bad, bad idea. idea. We'll get to those later in the show, right? Yeah, oh, those are my favorite. I don't know if you guys have seen. There's a, a. I'm looking forward to that. Oh my god, my favorite. And there's a. a we're going to be reading from a small segment from a, a, an American cartoon that was done by uh, Steven Spielberg. Produced it. It was called the Animaniacs, and they had a segment called "Good Idea, Bad Idea." That were these short interludes during uh, the episodes of the cartoon. So. For our humorous portion of the our safety episode, we'll be re- Steve and I will be reading off some of the good idea, bad, bad idea uh, uh, suggestions. And, I mean, it, and, Animaniacs was one of those just brilliant cartoons because it was meant for kids, right? It was totally meant for kids. Oh my god! But, but there was so depth. much if, depth to it. Yes. It was one of the first cartoons that I remember watching. I was already, I think, in middle school when it came out. And watching it, like, this is funny just because of, like, the slapstick, silly humor yes. that little kids would get. But then there's, you watch there's it some later. stuff that I got yeah. that were, like, historical or political references. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow. And then there was other stuff that I knew I didn't get. Yes. And it was all funny. Yes. You know, and so like parents would watch it. I watch it now. I watched it with my kids when they were growing and up. You, you and, and like, like, and you realize how advanced that is. This were... is all so clever. But it was one of the first ones that I remember seeing that was like that, that had the different layers. You know what I love? The the mount, the, the pinky in the brain yeah. being uh, like Pascal's mice. Uh, was it Pascal? Yes. No, was Pascal. it Pascal? No. What was the. There was an experiment where they had two mice and one had a point mutilation, um, uh, a point mutation. And so he would constantly be saying point. And it, it was so referential to the actual science behind what they were in the context of what they were that you didn't know why they were doing the slapstick comedy they were. But this point mutated mouse was saying point all the time so that you you would remember the word but not necessarily know what the co- contextual reference was until you get to a point where somehow you read neuroscience and you realize that these are <laughs> mice that have been experimented on that have gone through mutation it's really and, and we got to a point where gonna, we need we need to, to mutate uh, onto a advertising and then later in the yeah. show we're going to do what we do every night try to it now mm-hmm. try to take over the world. Come on, Piggy in the Brain. Piggy in the brain. Try to take over the world. This is the Great American Weekend. We'll be back shortly. So then I tell the bartender, no, you keep the change. <laughs> um, I'm out me. Guys, Bring I back. don't get it. Ina, it's an American thing. <laughs> 
learn more about American humor on Great American Weekend. Welcome back to the Great American Weekend here on Radio Vaughn. 103.1. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. With Thank our, you. For- our safety episode. And we've got quotes. Ina. 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 Yeah, quotes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. got quotes. I got quotes. <laughs> it's no joke. I got the. Quotes. I'm not a bloke. I got Ina I got MK, the, and she's not telling jokes. In my hand. Okay. Safety is something that happens between your ear, ears, not something you hold in your hands. Jeff oh, that's totally... Yeah, I think that's totally true. Like, planning and whatever is the first step in, in safety. As someone who's not very yeah. risk-averse, I would say I'm not very familiar <laughs> with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, I mean, how many times have you gotten electrocuted? Oh, luckily, not many. Uh, uh, not what do you many. mean by many? Only, only. I mean, like, very slight electrocutions, because I've been safe enough to, like, shut it off. I mean, as a kid, I did, you know, someone told me never to put two metal things inside of the plug, because we have these, you know, like, these two metal, like, eyes in I the mean, plug. why do they do that? They always give such cool ideas. Yeah, I know. It's just yeah, like, by the way, don't, don't do this stick cool. a fork yeah. in the electrical outlet. Yeah, like, you know what? Dude, I, I never say- would have thought of that on yeah, my so own. Thanks. I'm going to go try it, because... <laughs> Not yeah. even a knife. <laughs> it's interesting how the don't commands are usually like, but I wonder why. <laughs> the forbidden the fruit. Yeah. Mm. It's always there, hang- <laughs> hanging above our heads. Uh, the safety of the people shall be the highest law, says Marcus Cicero, Roman philosopher. Unless the people are causing global warming, in which case nuclear warfare would have to eradicate them from the face of the planet. <laughs> Yeah, have we reached that point yet where it might actually be safer just to have a nuclear holocaust than, <laughs> than to continue on well, with, I, <laughs> with the way that we're destroying the environment? <laughs> this sounds like a pinky in the brain co- conversation. <laughs> it's like, what? Are, <laughs> but gee, brain, what are we doing tonight? The same thing we're doing every night, pinky. <laughs> trying to trying avert, to trying to avert destruction of, of the, the entire <laughs> planet. And anyway. <laughs> Non sequitur, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Government's yeah, first the truth. duty and highest obligation is public safety, says Arnold Schwarzenegger. Government's first duty and highest obligation is public safety. Arnold, the Schwartz. <laughs> May the Schwartz be with you. <laughs> The baseballs. <laughs> yeah. The baseballs, anyone? <laughs> the government. If first... any of you out there like Star Wars and haven't seen Spaceballs yet, Do check it. that out. It, it is have not. Have you seen it, Ina? Have, have you not... seen I've the movie Spaceballs? Star... I've seen Star Wars. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Spaceballs. Yeah, Spaceballs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Hilarious. Of course. Mel yeah. Brooks is probably yeah. one I of my it. favorite yeah. comedians. And, uh,. I don't know what I feel about this quote, though. Government, government's first duty. I mean, I guess so. I don't, aren't we? The, aren't the people that make the government really the ultimate responsible people? I mean, this is how it's I all, think it's about all it. Mutual. Okay. So let's let's safety. agree on that. Safety. Okay. Okay. Safety. <clears throat> they who can give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve. Neither liberty nor safety. How harsh. Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, well, I and mean, this is this is principles. He's yeah, talking about principles yeah. here. Um, and it and it sounds it's not a unique quote. I mean, you know, other other presidents, other people have. Well, Benjamin Franklin wasn't a president. He was one of the founding fathers, though. Um, have said things like this. I know it, it, things like this would come out of Teddy Roosevelt's mouth quite often. You know, we we can't be, we can't have safety and happiness and peace be our main goals. We need to yeah. be willing to to struggle, to sacrifice, fight to, each other, to fight. <laughs> yeah. Divisiveness. Well, this is. I mean, I. I feel like there's a balance because uh, at this point in the, you know, in American politics, I don't know if you've been following, you know, but right now is like the high point of total American divisiveness right now. 
And it's a, there's a balance, I feel, to that struggle. Maybe it's a struggle we need. But it's not really a Every... struggle. I mean, we're dodging the struggle because way, we're yeah. not actually talking about things. Yeah, coming to understandings or yeah. to like... Uh, yeah, reach what a... do you think this sounds like? Every step you take, every move you break... <laughs> every move you make. you make, I'll be watching you. What does it sound yes. like? That sounds like safety. You know, it's, you know, no, it sounds it's... like... Promise. <laughs> sounds no, like the oh, NSA no. and Big Brother watching me. You know what song that's from, You know what song that's from, right? The police? The police. And We're going to listen to it that. right oh, really? after this advertisement break, followed by this song. Stay and, tuned. Oh. Yeah. This is uh, this is the great American weekend. We'll it's so back, great so. and it's so American. I, I've got something to say about the song after the break. Yeah, though. we're gonna do it right okay. after it. Stay tuned. Hey, what kind of fixins do you like on your hot dog? Uh, fixins? Yeah, relish, onions, mustard, ketchup, condiments. Condo? No, no, not that. Oh, fixins! I love chili dogs. Learn about American cuisine on the Great American Weekend. Welcome back to the Great American Weekend here on Radio Vaughn. I am Master Steve. I've got Hasva QT next to me. What, what? And Ina MK across from me. So I love that song. And what makes me <laughs> like it the even police, more. Yeah? yeah, the police. Yeah. Is I'll be watching. Who, and, and the police, <laughs> that's the band that Sting got his start in and became famous in. And he was he wrote the lyrics to the song and he had to come out at one point and basically say uh, you know stop stop using that song in in your weddings please because it's not a romantic song <laughs> okay it's a did song, you know this no it's a song about a stalker basically i never I yeah. never really got into lyrics, to be honest. But you write <laughs> lyrics. Yeah. Bing, bing. <laughs> yeah, shame on me. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 not a like romantic lovey dovey song. It's kind of that, a creepy that's song. That's shocking to me because everyone romanticized this song. It's like every step I'm with you, every step I'm with you, every oh, step can't I'm you watching. See you. you belong to me. Yeah. And, I mean, but like for me, it was kind of creepy because like I'll be watching. It's like, whoa, bro, just get your own life, man. Like kind of let go a little bit you know yeah uh, have you guys noticed that we, armenians also use a lot during their weddings and like they really stalk fun each other and, and no i mean because <laughs> yes, i do the, notice I armenians safety stalk. tip number five for the night I actually stay survive. away from stay away from stalkers this is something that i did notice about <laughs> armenian culture actually there is a culture of like what is kind of stalking in armenia oh, yeah. i mean you know about this yeah yeah uh, do you know about this, Ina? Like a, a boy really likes a girl, and mm -hmm. what he decides to do is follow her. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to like freak out people who are listening, but uh, this is kind of like I'm um, something that I've learned. I was like, and, and the and the women that I know, they're like, they're like, yeah, it was, it was, he was like, it was romantic that he was following me. I mean, sometimes when you want it, but when you don't want it, it's like, ew, it was gross. But it, amongst guys. It's something that they do. I don't know. I mean, like, I, I it's well, kind of it, it, I mean, it's kind of weird to me. Some guys kidnap yeah. girls, and then at the end oh, of the boy. day, they get married. How how, how do they do that? What? I don't know. What? <laughs> I'm not into the details. Can you please? <laughs> well, how can you drop a bomb like that and not explain? <laughs> a guys kidnap girls? Is yeah. that what you just said? Yeah. What? What? What is that? Achik pachtsenen? Ayo. Oh my God. <laughs> I always thought that that was like taking taking like a some a lover but on a again, ride or like so, like someone that you're like I mean but like again a, I think a, a lot of it has to do with with how it's done, you know I mean if a guy is following a girl because he likes her and he's like a little shy or self conscious and he doesn't want you know what I mean then there's something kind of maybe cute about it. Yeah, but if it's he's following her and like, oh, I'm gonna see where she's going. I mean, you know, what I mean, there's there's the intention and the tone of it. Um, I've heard about yeah, the the, the guys kidnapping the girls, and, <laughs> and, and but and I feel like in kidnapping. both cases, they, yeah, they, they a, it's a fine line, it's very very <laughs> fine, because oh, yeah. like it's in both in both cases like. Let me see where they're going. But one, it's like, ah, oh, let me see where they're going. The other one's like, <laughs> let me see where they're going. And it's like, <laughs> it's the same thought, yeah. you know. Well, have you ever read the, the evil this, laugh is the always story? There. Yeah, 
Yeah. Have you ever read the story Arby uh, by James Joyce from his collection of short stories, Dubliners? I may have. I, yeah. I don't, I don't and remember. And that's like, you know, there's the boy who, um, you know, has a crush on his friend's older sister and he watches her Ooh. as she walks past and he kind of, I mean, it's, it's not stalking. It's this kind of puppy love kind of, I want to get her to notice me. And, you know, and, and so that's not. What happened? Creepy. But then what happened? Um, I'm not going to tell you. No, I want to know goes, the end of this story. Did they story. live happily ever after? <laughs> no, it has oh. a... It, do, it doesn't even get that far. It, it just ends with this sort of weird epiphany at the... Anyway, it, but... Yeah, it's a great story. It's a really, really good story. Okay, should, so as a matter of safety it. for all of you uh, out there, both men and women, if you're stalking, make sure that it's wanted. And if you're being stalked, make sure that you know what, what's going on and <laughs> be aware. Do not follow vet, vet the each other. people who are following you. <laughs> people follow each other only in Facebook. <laughs> yeah, oh. I mean, that whole thing is like almost <laughs> creepy. Yeah. Following people on Facebook. Which, yeah. but, which and, brings uh, us to digital thing stalking. I have is a um, quote by Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, we're doing quotes again. Yeah, but yeah, why not? we haven't finished the meal. Uh, so. That's right. The American people will come first once again. My plan will begin with safety at home, which means safe neighborhoods, secure borders, and protection from terrorism. There can be no prosperity without law and order. I have a comment. Yep. Whenever I hear, with all of the sexual harassment allegations, with all of the lewd commentary that was said behind closed doors, with all of the porn, uh, the porn star talk and the three wives and then having the porn star while his first child was being born talk that was all happening. Mm hmm when i hear donald trump say the american people will come first once again i don't think about priorities i think about orgasms <laughs> this is the association that comes into my mind unfortunately because when he's talking about the american people coming first again it's like come on donald trump why do i have to think about these things when i think about you Steven's sleeping. <laughs> Steven's like, ugh, I have no, kids listening to this. Jesus, no. <laughs> you can't hear it, but I'm pounding my head against the microphone. Uh, it's not safe. It's not safe, <laughs> Steven. I'm sorry. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. But I mean, he's saying the American people will come first you once to, again. You need to resist being pulled down into the gutter by all of this crap the media that's out there in the media <laughs> the fake news media <laughs> i mean well fake or not it's kind of irrelevant and it's completely beside the point it's just it we are so obsessed with garbage these days it mm, drives me nuts such, such delicious garbage out there <laughs> <laughs> I, the, the tabloid the tabloid news ugh well, it's the so, tabloids have become news. It's so easily consumable. That's the thing. Um, yeah. Fast food news. That's yeah. what it is. Ah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. And now, and there is another one. Very simply, our physical and spiritual safety lies in never even getting close to the line that separates light from dark, good from evil, says Sherry L. Du. Mm. What, do, what do you guys think she meant by that? Uh, well, like I mean, not even coming close to the this border, staying in the on the well, staying away from yeah, staying, dark. yeah, staying away from that that border between good and evil, light and dark. I mean, just staying on the good side, not even getting close. And I think, um, not even I don't trying know, I, to do yeah, something. I, I don't. Which is, um, mm. I I I think that's pretty simplistic and it goes i believe against kind of what even though benjamin franklin probably wouldn't agree but i think it goes against the the essence of of benjamin franklin's um quote that you read earlier you know the, they who can give up essential liberty to yeah. attain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty or safety you have to risk things you have to risk things and That's i true. i strongly believe that there is no set line between, between light, light and, and dark, dark and good and evil and you have to keep on approaching it and pushing it and and away from it, you it, no 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 I, uh, approaching it and pushing it and, and and almost 
flirting with that line, with that danger, mm -hmm. in order to know where it is and in, in order to know where you're going. I do you know, that every idea, day when we're on air. The <laughs> idea that the idea that you know the good is way over here and the bad is way over here and there's a line in between yeah, that clearly so separates them. I'm the line in um, between, baby. <laughs> <laughs> is is so simplistic and and kind of sim simple like, modernist like a fairy tale. sort of thing. I, yeah, I the, agree with Steve. You know the. Again, going back to, 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 to people like Nietzsche, Nietzsche in his, his book, The Birth of Tragedy, you know, tragedy is necessary to, to jar us mm -hmm. um, and to get us to reevaluate our evaluations of what's right, right and what's right. wrong, what's good and what's evil. Um, tragedy, in I mean, I'm talking about tragedy in terms of um, theater and things like that, in terms of art, tragedy should bring up um, uh, basically a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation that yeah. makes us question how we think, how we evaluate things because our standard ideas of right and wrong don't fit this new situation that we're in and we have to refigure them. And without darkness, there is no light at the end of the day. I mean, yeah. the and without light, there is no darkness. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> if there was no faith, there would be no living in this world. We would not even eat hash with any safety. Josh Billings says that. And how do you guys think faith is connected to safety? I mean... Well, I know that uh, cancer patients that have uh, faith and believe in God have a, a better sense of feeling than those who do not believe in God and have a uh, a lesser lesser faith that is based on a higher power. And it's not necessarily that they live longer, but the quality of their time in their existence is at a, a better base peace mm -hmm. than those that don't have faith because there's a kind of a surrendering and an acceptance to that which is or the the fate or the destiny that they've been handed. And so in that sense of peace and acceptance, you transform your, uh, your current state because you are uh, relegating it to something else other than yourself. Whereas I think that if you take it all on yourself, you're kind of, um, uh, you think analytically, you split it apart a million ways, you blame yourself, you blame others, you blame higher powers even. Uh, so I don't know. No, I mean, that's, that's to a certain extent, it. it's it's about having hope or being at least somewhat optimistic, mm. right? I mean, if you have hope, then you try. Yeah. You put in the effort. You know, if you're optimistic, then you think that, um, you know, well, there's Everything, a chance. Yeah. There's a chance that things will work out. Mm -hmm. And so then you work towards it. And it kind of becomes... Uh, well, you open up the chance of it be, being a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, mm -hmm. I believe that this is what co what's going to happen, so I'm actually going to do what needs to be done to get it to happen, and so it will happen. And it you eventually know, does happen. But it's, most most of the time, when you what believe, does happen? What happens? Things that you believe in. Yeah, so it's interesting you say this. This is what I. The first thing that popped into my mind was that. There's a quote by an Armenian philosopher that's probably the only one that reached an international stage. His name is George Ivanovich Gurdjieff. Mm -hmm. And he has a series of aphorisms and he has one on love, faith and hope. And he divides them into three types of hope. There's conscious mm -hmm. hope, mm -hmm. there's emotional hope and blind hope. And there's body, bodily hope, physical hope, not okay. blind hope. So it's conscious, emotional and bodily. And so he says hope of consciousness is strength. Hope of uh, hope of feeling is cowardice, and hope of body is disease. And the way that I interpret that is that when you hope consciously, mm -hmm. you integrate all the different parts of you in order to come to an understanding or an acceptance of uh, your reality. When you hope with your emotions, mm -hmm. it can uh, be so easily uh, changed by mood. Yeah. So that it becomes uh, kind affected, of fearful of affected by 
outer different things. influences yeah. yeah and then if you hope for your uh, if you hope with your body i mean the body is consistently going to deteriorate uh, over time i mean if we're all very lucky in our sleep we'll just kind of like magically rise into the ether but you know we will experience pain and suffering in our <laughs> lifetime and so if you put your hope on your body it, it will just lead to disease so uh there's this emphasis on conscious hope that i think um is kind of what steve was talking about what you're talking about with this quote here yeah thank you it, it was a good discussion and then i have uh, one more uh, one more quote to share with you guys so we must respect the past and mistrust the present if we wish to provide for the safety of the future that sounds like such a cold war <laughs> joseph Schubert. sounds like such a cold war statement why mistrust <laughs> it's like, the present i don't really get I, it i feel like you know <laughs> you know what there's a quote that i remember hearing from i don't know what like what maybe it was i don't know if it was this is actually what's kind of like worrying i don't know if it was something that was like a comedic movie or if it was an actual quote by someone that was uh, in the military. But it was something like, <clears throat> if there's nothing on the map, that must mean that there's something on the map. <laughs> so there's this like, the like, like Cold War, <laughs> like there, there's this Cold War like, suspicion of, like, there's nothing suspicious there. Which makes me suspicious, suspicious. that yeah. there's something there. They didn't put anything to there. Be, that must mean true. that they're hiding something. something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And we've got another quote so, from um, a cartoon. The mis- well, I know I, the, the mistrust of the present. I think is is interesting. I actually like that hmm. because you what you see here and now it's, without, it's not going to last forever. Well, yeah. no, but I mean, it's the, the past and the future put it into context. And so if you have the present uh-huh. and you don't put it into context by respecting the past and realizing how we got here and how the present can m- make a bridge to the future, mm-hmm. um, then, you know, what is the present? I mean, we can see all sorts of things and misunderstand all sorts of things that are going on mm-hmm. um, and get caught up too much in right now and lose sight of the, the wider, bigger picture. So the cure is analyze. Balance. Yeah, I think so. Analyze. analyze. So. Old way. So. Can, can we got, hear the... Yeah. I, so this comes Pooh. from the, the house at Pooh Corner, okay, by Milne. <laughs> it's, it's a Winnie the Pooh quote. And it's when um, Tigger and Rue are stuck up in <laughs> the tree. I wants to say something. And no, no, Winnie no. the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. The Winnie the Pooh is great. It's just when you say Pooh Corner, I just think of something completely different. <laughs> one of one of my favorite jokes of all time revolves around Pooh. Pooh, yeah, Pooh. You um, have to follow that uh, this quote up with uh, your favorite joke <laughs> of all time. Maybe, maybe if we have time later on in the show. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, so they're going to jump down, and 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 uh, was it Eeyore and Pooh and Piglet and Christopher Robin are standing there with with uh, Christopher Robin's, they call it a tunic in the in the book, but it's a coat in the movie, right? And they're going to mm-hmm. catch him, catch Rue. Um, and Eeyore, his, Eeyore whispers, I'm not saying there won't be an accident now, mind you. There are funny things, accidents. Hmm? You never have them till you're having them. <laughs> <laughs> some, some wisdom from... You never... We need the well, that's the oh, thing. I mean, Eeyore. if you think if you think uh, ahead, you're so depressed. If all you the think time. ahead yeah. and you plan ahead, then you can prevent accidents, right? Yeah. You know, you right. can make plans to. You know, if, if you're working on the elect, you know, the electrical wiring, turn off the fuse at the, you know, at the breaker box. Um, you know, if you're driving your car, wear a seatbelt and watch where you're going. You know, put your phone away. That kind of stuff. Um, I always you don't have accidents. You your... don't have accidents when you're expecting to have accidents. You know, sure. and the more you expect them and plan right. for them, the That's less they happen. Absolutely true. Expect you the drag unexpected accidents huh? if you expect them on any step. I mean, you drag like a magnet. You become an accident <laughs> magnet. <laughs> well, if you dread them, but if you plan for them, if you plan to prevent them, then you know. 
For all you people out there, one of my, one of my friends. Oh. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, no, just real quick. For all you people out there, an additional quote for the this quote segment. Uh, expect the unexpected is uh, probably a really great quote for the safety month because it allows you to scenario plan to consider from your present moment what you imagine to possibly and potentially occur in multiple different situations in the future and to uh, act accordingly if the time comes. But also at the same time, do not expect unexpected accidents. <laughs> <laughs> If the time We're comes. We're starting to sound, you're, you're, you guys are starting to sound a little bit like Donald Trump. So. <laughs> the unknown unknowns and the known yeah, unknowns. The known unknowns. <laughs> Which I love that. That's like one of the most philosophic, <laughs> philosophically deep things I've ever heard. A, a while being used minister to or a, a, you know a, while, a secretary of defense while being say. used to deny the 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 existence or non-existence of weapons of mass destruction. It was a, it was said in a bigger context than that. It was this philosophical approach will help us <laughs> uh, survive through the break and then we'll enjoy forevermore i'll be the one by james ingram and we'll be back uh, in our studio with a, a segment on good idea and bad idea yeah finally it's gonna be fun what's the best word in american english uh my all-time favorite word is f but i usually refer to it as love making become more fluent in american english and slang Welcome back to the Great American Weekend here on Radio Vaughn. 103.1. And we're here with Hasva Cutie, Master Steve, and... Ina MK. Ina MK. And we're ready to goof here a little <laughs> bit. Yay, yay. My favorite part is coming soon. Get uh, ready. Drums. Can you do the drum sound? <laughs> so this is uh this is going to be this is you know what i'm just going to jump right into it yeah just do it all right and now it's now time for another good idea bad idea good idea feeding stray kittens in the park bad idea feeding stray kittens in the park to a bear <laughs> <laughs> Is it, have you ever seen a bear in a park? <laughs> That's have beyond I, the point. You're, you're, you're taking this far too seriously. Have I ever seen a, far I, too seriously. Just yes, laugh. Yes, yes, Even just, if it isn't funny, just... Just laugh. It's just like... Go, I, 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 you know, I good get, idea. Go, good go idea. For it, go for it. Going trick-or-treating on Halloween. Bad idea. Oh, wait a second. Going trick-or-treating on St. Patrick's Day. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. So, uh, good idea. Doing your own yard work. Bad idea. Doing your own dental work. No way. Ouch. <laughs> good idea. Giving a small child a balloon. Bad idea. Giving a small child a bunch of balloons. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye, Timmy. <laughs> Have a nice flight. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Tossing a penny into a fountain to make a wish. Bad idea. Tossing your cousin penny into a fountain to make a wish. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, if your wish is getting rid of your cousin uh, penny, that psh. might work. <laughs> Good idea. Singing Christmas carols to your neighbors. Again. Bad idea. Singing Christmas carols to your neighbors on the 4th of July. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. I have a feeling they might start shooting fireworks at, at you. you. <laughs> Good idea. Finding Easter eggs on Easter morning. Bad idea. Finding Easter eggs on Christmas morning. <laughs> Ew. I thought something smelled funny back here. <laughs> behind the china cabinet. <laughs> I, like, Too late. I, li I like this one. I like this one. Good idea. Giving your dog a bath. Bad idea. 
having your dog dry cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of like going to a dry Dry cleaner and just be like, hey, could you take care of this for me? (laughs) (laughs) Woof. This is, this is, uh, you know, not, not a real one. Good idea. Drying your cat with a towel. Bad Bad idea. idea. Dry your cat in the microwave. (laughs) (laughs) Good idea. Playing the scales on a piano. Bad idea. Playing scales on a fish. <laughs> and again, these are all from the from the kids' cartoon Animaniacs. Um, good idea. Playing cops and robbers in the park. Bad idea. Playing cops and robbers in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Don't do that, kids. <laughs> here's, here's here's one final final one. Um, good idea. Climbing a mountain. Bad idea. Climbing a mountain lion. <laughs> <laughs> Roar. So, did I tell one of my favorite jokes now? Yes. Oh okay. my god. I can't be my one not just one of your favorite jokes, but one of your favorite jokes of all time. One. Two involves poo as a Subject and then three involves a cuss word that may or may not be said by you, but I will gladly take on that responsibility for okay. it. So, for the first time exclusively, so there's this, <laughs> live on air. Steve, there's Master this Steve, teacher, possibly there's this cussing, teacher, and he's getting ready to start the school year, and he's trying to think of uh, sort of a long-term goal, a long-term project to have with his students that he can kind of carry out throughout the entire year and you know see how well they do and he comes up with the his students are first graders he comes up with the idea that he's going to try to get his young students you know six years old to start using more um you know adult language to to use serious words and not Mm -hmm. little kids words Okay, so the first day of school, he does the typical thing. Everybody's going to stand up and tell them their name and tell everybody a little bit, you know, introduce themselves, tell tell their new classmates uh, something, you know, like what was the highlight of their summer or what's something they did over the summer that they really enjoyed. Um, and, the, and the teacher says, and I want you to do it using, you know, big people words, being serious, not, you know, mm-hmm. using little kids words. Okay, so the first kid... Bad idea. The, the, the first, <laughs> the right, exactly. It's like, the first kid, you know, stands up and I got a couple she, big she introduces herself and says, you know, my favorite thing that I did this summer is my family went on vacation and went and visited my Grammy and Grampy. Said, no, not your Grammy and Grampy. She was my grandmother and my grandfather. Mm-hmm. You know, and so they're going around the class and the teacher keeps correcting the kids with little things and finally this one little boy stands up and introduces himself and he looks all proud and he goes one of my favorite things that happened this summer is that my dad read to me every night at bedtime he read me a story and he tucked me in and he gave me my teddy bear and the teacher's like oh that's very good Um, you know he didn't make any mistakes and he's all proud of himself and then the teacher asks and what was one of the favorite books that your dad read to you Mm -hmm. And he gets a big, huge smile on his face, and he goes, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Shit. (laughs) (laughs) Because, you know, poo is... Okay, can we get a round of applause, please? Can we get, like, an applause on this? I know, isn't it so sad that that's one of my favorite... We'd like to congratulate... That's one of my favorite jokes of all time. Master Steve on his first cuss word live on air. I lame. (laughs) That is, that's this is a this is a historical moment, uh, everyone. May I just it be like to, first and not the last. I'm sorry. <laughs> let me correct myself. This is a, a historical fucking moment right now, so for everyone listening oh, out no. there. I started it. <laughs> here comes the flood of curse words. And here we're uh, ready for some serious stuff. What's the next? Oh, we are serious. Oh, are so, we getting serious we right now? We get serious now. We're like, talking. We're talking OSHA. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, first, let's. So, the National Safety Council in the U.S.—they're the ones that put together the the uh, June thing for for National Safety Month. Uh, and on their website, they've got some lists of things. For, one of them is work safety, um, things that people should watch out for at work. 
uh, in order to be more safe. One is fatigue. Mm -hmm. okay? You should be well rested. Um, when you don't get enough sleep, you know, that's seven to nine hours a night, then you're drowsy. You be aggressive. And, well, I mean, you could be aggressive. You could be drowsy. You could just be a little bit more clumsy. Vulnerable. Okay? And, that, and that can cause accidents. For flus and other. Oh, well, yeah. You guys too, are yeah. sounding, so you guys um, sound like you're describing my general state of being. Like <laughs> vulnerable, aggressive, grumpy. Fragile. Uh, fragile. What was the other one? Vulnerable to flu. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> drugs at work, I, I think yes, that kind of goes <laughs> yes, which is what, which is what makes being a rock star such a, a hazardous profession. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I had to jump on that. Like, drugs, drugs at work. Drugs at work, I yes. Know, yeah. Why the hell not? Makes everything Can so much better. Can I have that kind better. of job? <laughs> I, uh, no, never mind. Never mind. Driving, safe driving at work. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> work, <laughs> work, workplace violence, slips, trips, and falls. Watch out for things. Keep your area safe. Don't have you know electrical cords, kind of hanging all over the place. Don't have big feet. Um, don't have big feet. Yeah, if your feet are too big, don't have water on. Break the floor. them and bind them just like they used to do don't to have big in China. women in women in China. Um, ergonomics <laughs> and overexertion. <laughs> I. <laughs> and, and being struck by objects, yeah, okay. I'm <laughs> and by lightning. I just, I just imagine, like you know, like like somehow rigging the space so that when you open the door, there's a tennis ball shooter that just kind of like, just to keep you on guard. Forget about tennis balls, man. Baseball. 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 Goes, uh, golf ball. <laughs> what was, I what was the good idea, bad idea about about balls? tennis balls? Good idea. Plate. Being served breakfast in bed. Yes. Bad idea. <laughs> yeah, being, being served, served tennis. tennis balls in bed. <laughs> Ouch! Ouch! Jeez, back and row. Would you please cut that out? I would love. I would love to hear like a conversation between a couple. Like, honey, could you go get us breakfast in bed? It's like, okay, sure. I would love to serve you. And then. <laughs> Okay. Seven causes of unintentional injury and death at home. Unintentional death. This is death. also un unintentional death. <laughs> Sorry, yes. I didn't mean that. Accidental. I didn't mean to I do that. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to fall off the roof and land on my head. Like, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but we can continue it right after the break. Okay. Okay. Ooh, a cliffhanger Not with the to top seven causes of unintentional injury and death. Stay tuned. Anybody want to make any guesses while we're at the commercial break as yeah, to what the top seven it. are? Mm, I like Put that. them in the comments. We may find a prize for you if you get one of them right. The Great American Weekend Safety Month. We'll be back. I would never live in America. Why not? Didn't you enjoy your time there? Yeah, why not? It was good, but it wasn't great. Because, because you, you didn't, didn't know us when, when you, you were there. there. Join Ina MK, Master Steve, and Hasva QT for a great American experience. Every Saturday on the Great American Weekend. We're, we're back in the studio, and first thing I did is uh, look up in the comments uh, whether we have something or not. So uh, one of our listeners says, what does Armenia lack to have a safe environment? Uh, okay, thank you, Ellen Amyan. Uh, we'll answer it later during the show. <laughs> we have the answer. No, I just... <laughs> and also, I think this is the answer to the question... To your question, Steve. Oh, which? What? Who? Where? We oh, somebody's fire. listening? Housework. No, we got many people oh, listening. Oh, fire. Hey, Housework. Fire. That's funny. Housework. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in, on, that does actually fit in. So here are the ones that they have listed. Now um, people are listening to it. <laughs> the people are listening. Now I'm going to try to be serious. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, you asked a question and there are answers. Oh, there are answers. Oh, my goodness. So there was It was a rhetorical and question. Um the, the first one is poisoning, okay? And part of the reason why this has become the, the top one, unfortunately, is because this includes uh, prescription drug overdoses. So that is poisoning, whether it's, um, you know, taking medicine or eating something you weren't supposed to, whatever, whatever, children, you know, drinking, cleaning Drano. products, Drano, whatever. Um, poisoning is one of the top killers. Do we in have the US. Drano in our meat? 
Oh yeah, okay. it's not it's not called that. But, right, but the same so, but thing. what is Drano? Drano is that sludgy liquid that you pour down your drain that it's cleans like the a, pipes. That yeah. cleans the pipes. It eats up all the hair and well, it dissolves it and whatever. And number two is, is motor vehicle crashes. Oof! In yeah. Armenia, it's an, in, in an insane amount. I mean, any you know what I notice about motor vehicle crashes in Armenia and that's highly distinct from the United States is that. The vehicles stop in the middle of the road, whereas in the United States, you are uh, you're guided by the Department of Motor Vehicles when you take the exam to get a license to drive yeah. to pull your car over to the side of the road so that you can um, not not be. Oh, the, after an accident. Yeah, after, yeah, an, after accident an accident happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you pull your car all over to the side of the road. And I don't get that over here. Why they, well, why it's, a matter of, it's a matter of trust and everything. You leave the, the cars in the place where they were or mm. are uh, until the police come and do their investigation so that the police can look at and see what actually happened. I think it's really what it is, is it's a matter of trust. It's true. You know, I, I think that's if you trust pull between the, people's yeah, words. If you, pull the, if you pull the car over to the side of the road, then you the, the police don't get a sense for what happened. You can kind of see, well. though, like, um, you know, where the dents, it's like clear, like, you know, the fender benders on the right. Not as clear as you might think. Uh, that's true. Someone might have, like, an already fallen off. You know, I mean, how uh, where are the skid marks in the road? How far apart were the cars after the crash? Right. You know, I mean, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, hey. Watch where, watch out when you're driving. Drive carefully. Put your phones away. Wear your seatbelt. This is something. And for kids, you know, and this is difficult with taxis. And I don't know how. I've never really known how to deal with this. Kids in taxis, it's a difficult thing. Yeah. You know, but uh, I had if a heart attack the other day. By if, the way, <laughs> if you're driving your own car and you have a kid in it, use a car seat, or at the very least, buckle the kid up. Yeah. You know, I'm so furious whenever I see and I see it often kids just crawling around in the car while their parents are driving either in the back seat or in the front seat you know I'm like ah that's just crazy okay you don't have a car seat at least buckle the kid up or keep them in the back seat I mean, it, it's oh man yeah anyway uh falls is number three falling down and this is related to the housework thing. yeah so you know? Argam, hello thanks for listening and thanks yeah that's uh, for what I, that's exactly what I yeah mean. yeah <laughs> Argam, thanks thanks a bunch for your comment that's also the... mimi Sh, thanks for the fire which was correct actually it's, actually yeah, yeah. it's one of them yeah. yeah fires and burns is number six but you know like like i was goofing around during our first commercial break here standing on the couch to change a light bulb instead of standing on the chair with wheels, wheels you yeah. know being careful on ladders use being careful your when head you, yeah well and not just use your head but take your time to do things right to decide yeah you know when uh, you're, you don't clean uh, mirrors with fire ah, i no. get it now <laughs> <laughs> you know if yeah. you if you get up on the roof to do something especially in the winter be careful mm. take your time you know i get up on the roof of, of my apartment the fifth floor and i have to clear the snow off sometimes otherwise we get these big huge thick sheets of ice you know like Falling 30 centimeters like a third of a meter that come heads. down and you know it's smashed up a, a, a windshield and a hood of a car oh a few God. years ago so i get up there and i clear the snow off when and there's you a make lot sure of it. you wear comfortable shoes no i tie myself up I actually went out and bought a, like a rock climbing harness yeah. that I put on, and then I connect it to uh, by a nice thick rope to one of the uh, to one of the beams inside. So if I slip and fall, I might be dangling there. But if for me to fall to the ground, I'd have to you know pull half the roof with me. <laughs> Master Steve, intelligent approach to everything. So, by and, the and, way, and, I'm... and it's so funny because people neighbors will see me up there in the winter and be like, Ah, oh, no, get no. What are you doing up there? Get <laughs> down it's so dangerous i'm like i'm tied i'm tied i'm being very it's careful safe. and i'm tied i appreciate your concern and but i am tied up you know what steve <laughs> i just uh, remembered one of the quotes that i skipped tonight but i'm not i'm gonna read it real quick less intelligence capacity equals less safety yeah. mike pompeo i think don't that's well what that's he meant no, actually, that's not. I mean, because he's the he's the Secretary of State. So what he when he's talking about intelligence capacity, he's talking about like. Um, Is he still the Secretary of State? No, 
Is he, yeah, I think he still is. The revolving doors. <laughs> I, love, I love how we, we're like acting. in questioning. Yeah, we're like we're know, questioning. <laughs> Um, when, here, when he's talking about intelligence capacity, he's talking about the ability to gather, um, like, information and data on other countries and stuff like that. But it does work, you know. Surveillance intelligence. You know, yes, yeah. that kind of, you know, the NSA, how they're always watching. Collecting all the blanket intelligence from every single cellular phone out in the world so, currently yeah, existence. Number, number four is choking and suffocation. Number five is drowning. Number six is fires and burns. Yeah, so yeah fire. Mimi, Mimi thank job. you. Good. Um, and natural and environmental incidents. Okay, this is actually the smallest con contributor, um, but it's still something that's worth mentioning, especially because, you know, next week is, is lightning safety week and so what do you do if you hear if you hear thunder you go on an advertisement break yeah <laughs> <laughs> that answer following up after these commercial breaks yeah wise advice uh, why is it the why is it wise <laughs> from wise. Said, said with a true Armenian accent <laughs> who has uh, intelligent approach to everything and no, also from really. Hasva a who wary, has a humorous approach a to wary, everything a wary intelligent approach and Ina MK Libra <clears throat> who has a, a balancing approach to everything <laughs> the free spirit amongst us all stay tuned we'll be back guys hello <laughs> Hi, is your refrigerator running? No, it doesn't have any legs. Some American jokes just don't work with foreigners. Welcome back to the Great American Weekend here on Radio Vaughn. We are back. So uh, you, you, you hear thunder <laughs> and what do you do? I run outside so that I can see everything happening because it's one of the most beautiful. I run lectures. outside and I climb up the tallest tree possible and I and hold my, my umbrella last... out. And <laughs> this is the last night I enjoy thunder <laughs> scenes. <laughs> no, you get inside. You go inside. And they say um, the CDC, the, the Center for Disease Control, has some tips on this. They, they've got the 30 30 rule. So if you see lightning you start counting and if you you know one two three and if you don't get to 30 before you hear the thunder then the uh the lightning is close enough to where you should be concerned about it and you should head indoors really yeah so really? if i if i don't get if i don't get to 30 it's close enough that it could be harmful. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the storm is, the, the storm center or whatever is close enough to where you could have lightning strike nearby you. Man, it was one of the, like, one of the most exciting times of my life where being so close to lightning that you could hear and feel it, but it wouldn't harm you. So there was this like illusion of safety when a, th a lightning storm would come by being in the home. I mean, not an illusion, but you're inside your home thinking you're safe. But yeah, lightning strikes are. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, and then they serious. also say 30 minutes after you see or hear the last lightning or thunder is how that's how long you should wait before you go outside. Mm -hmm. uh, and they say even if, you, it's not if you're stuck outside, Remember. yeah, it's not. <laughs> if you're stuck outside, crouch low to the ground, but don't lay on the ground. Like try to minimize your contact with the ground, because a lightning strike within a hundred feet of you could electrify the ground you're standing on and still electrocute you. It could still get you um, within a hundred feet. That's pretty far. Um, stay away from concrete floors and walls if you're inside because you've got the rebar running inside of concrete, the re-rod, the metal inside of the, that can conduct electricity. They also say, and this is something I learned, which it makes perfect sense, but I guess I'd never thought of it before. Don't try not to use the water if you're in the heart of a really heavy lightning storm, thunderstorm, yeah. because if your house or the building you're in gets struck by lightning, the metal pipes with the water in it, it's, it's a great conductor of electricity. 
so you know, you go to the bathroom and don't wash your hands. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> do don't not don't take... do don't you know like sit there and wash the dishes in the middle of a thunderstorm with running water, or don't take a shower, is what they're saying, because that increases the amount of time that you're in the water. And if the if the building gets struck by lightning, it's quite possible that the electricity will run through the pipes and through the water in the pipes and zap you in the shower. And do not dry your hair while you're lying in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> with not, a hair dryer. I mean, you could sit there with a towel and dry yeah, your hair. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. That's what yeah, I meant. No. <laughs> not a good idea. Bad idea. <laughs> Bad idea. Now, um, are, we, are we guys ready for the news? No, I've got one. I've got one more thing just really, really quick yeah, that I want to cool. mention. Let's do it. Um, June 28th is Paul Bunyan Day in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that's kind of, that, that I remember from being a kid because one of the places in the U.S. where Paul Bunyan was, was northern Minnesota. And Paul Bunyan is this folk tale, uh, American folk tale. And it's actually, it's kind of like a, a, a cross between a Hercules story and whatever. He was, I mean, he was a real, it's based on a real person and then it gets wildly exaggerated. So he was a lumberjack. Mm -hmm. A very strong uh, lumberjack who could chop a lot of wood and do all you know all this amazing stuff, but it gets exaggerated into he's a giant. They said what sixty three axe handles high. I mean, Hulk. he's like as big as a building, right? Hulk. And he's got this this friend, Babe the Blue Ox, who's gigantic. And one of the stories is that they stomped their way through northern Minnesota and made all these holes in the ground and that's where all of the lakes came from um so wow. yeah if you've never heard of paul bunyan before uh check it out now disney's, you know the legend yeah disney's got a movie about paul bunyan and there are a bunch of stories and some other cartoons out there an interesting what about little popeye thing. the, the, the what? sailor popeye, popeye the sailor well that's not a folk tale that's just a cartoon <laughs> i love i love the uh the <clears throat> the re revolving theme of uh poopy and poop and <laughs> So, yeah, and some of the other great, uh, uh, you know, feats that Paul Bunyan and Babe were up to, they dug the Missouri River mm -hmm. in order to transport the logs that they cut when they cleared all of North and South Dakota so it could be grazing land. They dug that river so that the logs could be transported down the Mississippi. Uh, they made Yellowstone Falls and Yellowstone National Park is like their own personal shower. Um, they made the Grand Teton Mountains. I saw all of this kind of stuff. I mean, it, it, it really is kind of American mythology. Yeah, it's I'm, really neat. It's interesting how uh, American mythology involves a lot of this, like uh, cutting down nature and then like moving nature and then like using, uh, you know, like uh, the Yellowstone waterfall as like a as like a shower. Oh yeah, but I mean that's that's a sort of I mean look at all sorts of pagan myths and stuff. They they explain physical features and natural occurrences using the gods and the heroes and whatnot. I, I, I'm contrasting with uh, Native American mythology where much of what uh, is told through their folklore is the uh, the union, the, the honoring, and the, uh, the mutual and reciprocal uh, utilization of man and nature. Whereas in American mythology, like Paul Bunyan, because I remember when I was a kid, you know, the axe, and babe the blue ox and it was all it was kind of like about force uh we, within nature you we know should like, do like a, strength yeah i think we should do american mythology episode you know that's a great this idea will be an interesting something I've well never i mean heard we, heard Native don't, american, we don't really american. have mythology yeah, i mean but, but it's, it's folktale yeah, yeah. Exactly. but it's very similar to to ancient mythology in a lot of respects oh yeah. you know i have that book by alan lomax about songs from north america that's a, a really oh, great yeah, resource we, should do we that. can bring that yeah. the beginning folk songs from america. but now cool i think it's, it's time for news it's right? time for uh, uh, speaking of songs we will hear one song inspire state of mind by alicia keys and jay-z and we'll be back for news okay so enjoy music we'll be back shortly hey steve do you like hush harisan spas yeah i love them but what would you call them in english yeah i'd call them cow foot stew chicken porridge and sour yogurt soup Ugh. 
Sorry I asked. The Great American Weekend. Welcome back to the Great American Weekend. We got news up for you all. I got my main man, Master Steve, to my left, and uh, my main lady over here, Ina MK, yeah, on my yeah, right. Yeah. And, and we're gonna you ch- are the Hasva QT. I'm, I am the Hasva. And yes, it's safe to eat the uh, yogurt soup and the <laughs> cow food. <laughs> cow food stew. <laughs> uh, uh, so safety is our theme for this, uh, this episode. <laughs> and... Um, now uh, I like where this is going. I know, really, yeah, right. Uh, specifically with regards to what our focus on the the show is is about uh, America, American culture, American um, news, and uh, representing it for uh, Armenia, Armenians, and uh, English speaking Armenians out there, and people who are interested in American culture. So. The cross lines and the crossroads of this uh, kind of come to a headway with news that has developed this week after a uh, what was reported to be an American uh, spy drone by Iran and uh, a drone by the United States that was shot down. And uh, it's it's uh, we'll read a little bit from The New York Times here and then we can discuss a a little bit of the news later. But uh, it's something that concerns everyone. So. um. The headline reads uh, from the New York Times, Trump says he was cocked and loaded to strike Iran, but pulled back. So uh, the (laughs) the article goes, um, President Trump said Friday morning that the United States military had been cocked and loaded for a strike against Iran on Thursday night, but that he called it off within 10 minutes to spare when a general told him that 150 people would probably die in the attack. In a series of tweets on Friday morning, Mr. Trump said he was prepared to retaliate against three sites in Iran for that country's downing of an American surveillance drone, but that he pulled back because the death of that many Iranians would not be proportionate to shooting down an unmanned drone. Now... Mr. Trump said in an NBC interview later on Friday that news reports that he had called off the mission while it was underway were inaccurate, but two senior United States officials said again on Friday that the military had received the president's go-ahead and that jets were headed towards targets in Iran when the mission was aborted. Thursday's on-again, off-again episode was another chaotic moment on the world stage for a president whose credibility, credibility with allies is already strained from two and a half years of delivering bellicose threats, sometimes without following through. But a person familiar with Mr. Trump's thinking said that the president, for one, was pleased with Thursday night's events because he liked the command of approving the strike, but also the decisiveness of calling it off. So something that's interesting also about this, which I read from another, uh, uh, another news source, was that uh, American military utilized for the first time and was uh, vocal about it uh, cyber attacks that were used in lieu of uh, military bombs. So uh, this was the first time that uh, the, there was the uh, actual reported use of cyber attacks against different sites in, uh, in uh, Iran uh, in oh, lieu was, of bombing attacks. When was that uh this this week oh i missed that one the cyber cyber attacks in iran oh okay oh wait a second no um, i i misspoke the, the a correction that is a separate news incident involving russia that will we we can discuss at a uh, later time yeah i was gonna say yeah, yeah yeah but yeah i think the safety the safety lesson in here is stay away from the strait of hormuz yeah, it's like, hey, <laughs> where, where should we go va- vacationing? This it's like you know, I was thinking the Strait of Hormuz is a nice place. Especially if you're an unmanned place. drone, <laughs> just you know, steer clear of that whole area. You know, this brings into light actually, though. This uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, the the humor. There's a, a Onion article that I read the headline about that was really. Uh, it kind of brings into light a question about modern warfare. And the headline was something to the effect of unmanned drone was quietly on its way to church when uh, innocently when uh, Iran uh, sh- uh, struck it and caused the, the uh, decision to uh, 
to retaliate by the United States. And it's humorous and it's funny because an unmanned drone going to church is just as ridiculous. But it brings into question this new uh, era of warfare where our, uh, you know, our there are no soldiers present. It's technology that's causing it. Or that is the um, the uh, enactor of the commands from afar. So the uh, responsibility is is one step away. And I mean, it's not nothing really new. This is something that's been discussed for 30 years. Um, but the further the technology brings us away from uh, the decision to, let's say, bomb a country, uh, I feel like sometimes it takes away the uh, impact and the, the, the sense of what it could cause. And in a way, I'm, I'm glad that Donald Trump agreed not to do that for the reason stated in this New York Times article that the 150 lives that it could have uh, cost uh, bombing uh, was enough for him to say, yeah, I would rather not do that and use diplomacy or some other method, whether it be cyber attacks or something else. But um, it's it's kind of um, it, it's telling about where we are in terms of modern day warfare. So, yeah, I mean, I think, well, the the, the it, it starts to turn it all into a video game to a certain extent in which. <laughs> means it all just turns into entertainment but that's what we're doing with everything anyway you and know, that's why we're, we're coming with you with the great american weekend we're slowly slowly <laughs> turning everything into entertainment uh, there's a sign i forget what the company name is but there's a sign that i walked past the other day here in town and it's a it's an edutainment company which like is combining ah, yeah, education okay. and entertainment, entertainment. And on Facebook, on my personal Facebook, I had shared a few weeks ago a little clip uh, with Neil Postman. We got to talk about Neil Postman one of these days on the show. Would love um, that. And he is talking about, well, okay, turning education into entertainment might be good in some respects, but in the end, it can really turn around to bite us in the butt because it makes kids think that learning has to be fun. Yeah. And teaches them that. Not everything that, is fun. Yeah. I mean, that you have to put, at a certain point, you have to put work into things. Of course. Certain things are worth doing and worth learning, even if they're not entertaining and fun. And some people, some. Which is why I try to be as stuff. boring as hell on this radio show. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> and some things you just need to do without even wanting to do it. That's, yeah. that's really hard to teach kids there's also a fine line there but even uh, we are uh, unexpectedly <laughs> close to our next break oh, and whoa uh, we're done for the news this time oh uh, man and we are ready for our calendar of events which will follow the advertisement so, can i just one minute just a couple of things so the Tours, a great American rock band, just came out with an album this week called Help Us Stranger. If you like guitar-driven rock and roll, check it out. And then next week, the Black Keys, another great American rock band, has a new album come out. Both of these bands have been kind of out of action for the last five or six years. Um, but it's some really good stuff they got coming out. That's, that's a calendar of events as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, we'll be back shortly with our calendar of events. The Great American Weekend Safety Episode. Hello and welcome to the Great American Weekend. Today... Uh, Steve, who is that? I think we've been infiltrated by a Russian radio host. Learn about American politics on the Great American Weekend. We're back with our calendar of events, and I announce its uh, launch. So we start with American Corners events in Yerevan. So, go. yeah, the debate club. So do you want to improve your English language skills and learn how to debate? Join uh, them every Thursday at 1 p.m. at the Yerevan American Corner for the, the debate club with Ardem Tutunjan. Uh, this week, the debate's topic is... Oh, no, that was... That was last week, helping elderly beggars. 
Um, an, an intermediate level of English is required. They haven't announced this week's topic yet, but when they do, we'll share the announcement in our Facebook group. It's, it's actually this week's topic. Yeah, I've double checked with the American corners. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I thought they elderly did that beggars last week, need anyway. extra help. Um, if you <laughs> enjoy a good story and want to expand your vocabulary as well as practice your listening and speaking skills, join the Year of an American Corners Reading Club every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Uh, an intermediate level of English is required for participation in that as well. Uh, when they announce what they'll be dis reading and discussing, we'll share that mm -hmm. on our Facebook group. And then there's the Teenage Club as well, which is every Friday at 2 p.m. And now for movies in English with Russian subtitles at Kino Park Yerevan Mall, June 23rd to 26th, Ma, a psychological horror film, one of my favorite genres, at 1235. <laughs> And then Men in Black International at 6.15. American propaganda at its greatest. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kutov. And now for uh, <laughs> live... Kutov. Kutov. That's, that's, Kutov. Kutov. that's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now for live music. And before we jump in, when Ina continues, uh, we'd like to express our condolences to the family of Stepan Shakaryan, uh, a Armenian musical composer uh, and uh, score writer for uh, diff films and for cartoons um, and uh, a really just a, an amazing um, musician, uh, jazz musician, composer, uh, and orchestra conductor. Um, and also classical composer as well. Yeah, yeah very much so. Um, he was uh, one of the Armenian greats, and he will be very missed. And uh, if you have a chance to listen to his last album that was released by uh, Charm Productions called Moon Over the Mountain, uh, I highly recommend it. It's uh, very lively and uplifting. And uh, again, uh, 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 in memory of Stepan Shakarian. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hasva. It was important to mention. So let's get to live music events. Surena Ustamian with a band at Mezzo Classic House Club, June 22nd and 29th at 9 p.m. Lucas Madoyan Blues Band at Mezzo, June 23rd at 9.30 p.m. Rina D. and Sasha at Barco, June 23rd. Garik and Sona Summer Mood Concert at Comic Club, June 23rd at 9.30 p.m. And if I could jump in here, uh, tomorrow at the uh, Sarian Museum on the fourth floor at 7 p.m., Shaket Atavosyan <laughs> will be playing an evening of uh, classical piano mm -hmm. uh, with different pieces, including Chopin, Debussy, uh, Rachmaninov, within the context of the Between Cycles art exhibition of uh, Felix Yerazarian's uh, final uh, line of unseen works so if you are available definitely stop by Sarian Museum fourth floor for an evening with classical music art and music fusion do not miss this Sunday at 7 there is ID project live at barcode on the 24th of uh, June I guess starting again at um, when is it starting? It's not mentioned. Musakian's band Live Fusion at Kami Club, June 25th at 7 p.m. Dialogue Music Project at Metal Classic House, June 26th at 9 p.m. Musical Friendly Evening with Haik Petrosian at Kami Club, June 24th, 9.30 p.m. New Quintet at the venue on the 27th uh, of June, at, starting at 9 if each of us charity concert at Hugo Bar and Restaurant June 28th at 8 p.m. And finally, Don Quixote Ballet in three acts June 29th at 7 p.m. at Opera and Ballet State Theater. Do not miss this events. So and there's a lot of music, live music coming out yeah. at the Hanyan Club this week. We've got Arpenik and Friends on the 23rd, a jam session with Conan Grigorian on the 24th, a jam session, jam session with Arsene Nersisian on the 25th, the uh, Karin Grigorian Quartet on the 26th, and the Tigran Harutunyan Quartet on the 27th, all at Ulihanyan Club. 
Thank you. And we have theaters, Upside Down Dream at Malian Theater, June 24th, 7 p.m., both for kids and grown-ups, a performance. Really good one. I would recommend to visit it. Babylon Show performance at Metro Theater, June 28th at 7 p.m. And Hasva uh, will introduce the parties. For, well, for art, uh, there's a new art gallery announces the opening of a solo exhibition of intercontinental artist Solis on June 23rd, tomorrow at 6 p.m. at the Noor Art Gallery. Uh, this art exhibition is in various international solo shows in America, Canada, and Paris. And in 2018, Solis was nominated as one of the five Irish artists to receive the Irish Central's Creativity and Arts Award, honoring him for his work in the streets of New York. And I would also like to add that tomorrow, Sunday, 23rd, is the closing of the Between Cycles art exhibition with, uh, again, a classical performance so if you haven't seen the uh, art of Felix Yera Zarian uh, come to the Zarian fourth floor and check it out thank you we've got a fashion event fashion forum year one 2019 starting June 25th through 29th at 7 p.m. at Tumo Center for Creative Technologies the mission of this forum is expanding the fashion industry in Armenia. So if you're interested, go ahead and visit it. We also have Festival of Aveluk at Vartenik, which is in Gerarkunik region, June 29th, from starting from noon. So if you want to spend a fun day... Having Aveluk. Yeah, having <laughs> Aveluk. <laughs> go ahead and do it. Also, Hugo Bar and Restaurant offers events starting... At at 8.30 p.m., June 24th, DJ Dave, June 25th, DJ Smooth Music, June 26th, Fashion Event, and DJ Strong, and June 27th, DJ Greg. And we've got uh, also some other parties, but we're out of time, so we will post this information on our page again. Thanks for listening to our show tonight. Thanks to everybody who commented, who uh, were who was listening and who was learning new things with Master Steve Hasva QT and, and Ina, Ina MK. MK. We'll see you guys next week when we'll be talking about the Fourth of July. Uh, Thanks so yeah. much for listening, guys. Make sure you don't miss the 4th of July. It's going to be really cool. Bye-bye.